Hello everybody, it's Sarah and today I decided I wanted to finally try and film a bookshelf tour. An attempt was made at the very beginning of my channel that didn't work out so well, so I thought enough time has passed so I can try to film a bookshelf tour again. Before I go into this bookshelf tour, which will probably be very long, I own about 350 books but that is just counting the books that are fiction, that is not counting any non-fiction books on my shelves, which I think I might have around 50 of those. I don't know. It's just I have a lot of books that I have to buy for uni and also not counting any mangas or graphic novels. I also will not go through my mangas and graphic novels in this video, also not through my non-fiction because I think that's quite uninteresting. But my mangas and graphic novels, I won't go through them because I own around 400 or over 400 mangas alone. And I think that would be a little bit too long if you ever want an extra bookshelf tour about all my mangas. Let me know in the comments down below and I will do that, but not in this one. And so let's get started since, again, it's going to be quite long. So let's start with a quick overview over my bookshelves just so you can see from top to bottom, these are my main bookshelves. I have a few shelves scattered around my room that hold, for example, my nonfiction books and some of my favorite books. Otherwise, all of my favorite books are in this shelf. I have my books sorted by genre, author, kind of by content, also by age group, and just a little bit what fits where and whatever looks good. I also have all my K-pop, albums on the shelf well almost all of them i don't have my bts albums on the shelf and i do not have any of my non-fiction books on the shelf except for like language books up here i also have quite a few older books on my shelves like over here and also up there these are mostly decorative and i won't go into them too closely because most of them i just got because they looked pretty and not necessarily because of which book they are so now that we have an overview, let's get a little bit closer. So I have decided to start with the books that are randomly all around my room. First, I have this shelf here. I have just a few of my beautiful classic editions up here. I have the Black Jewel series down here. Here are some more older books. And yeah, let's get in a bit closer. Okay, so firstly over here, let's move this plant out of the way and try not to knock over everything. First, I have the Word Cloud edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray. Then I have the Word Cloud edition of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. The Picture of Dorian Gray, by the way, is by Oscar Wilde for all of those who probably know. <laughs> then I have here my annotated uncensored edition of The Picture of Dorian Gray, again by Oscar Wilde. This is an illustrated edition of the first part of the Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling, illustrated by Robert Inkpen. I have this edition of Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie, and then a collection of fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm. Moving down here, I am sorry for the angle, but I am too lazy to like pull in the legs of my tripod. But here I have my Black Jewels collection. First, I have the bind up of the entire trilogy, which is Daughter of the Blood, Heir to the Shadows and Queen of the Darkness. Then I have Dreams Made Flesh, Tangled Webs, The Invisible Ring, Shadow Queen and Shalador's Lady. Here I have some more older books. I have The Decamerone by Boccaccio. I have Fausts Leben, Taten und Höllenfahrt by Friedrich Klinger. I think it's Friedrich Klinger. I have another collection of the Grimm's Fairy Tales and I have like this history of Sean d'Arc, huge ass book with gilded edges, which I absolutely love. Very randomly over here, I have my copy of The World of Ice and Fire by George R. Martin. And this book has absolutely beautiful illustrations. So if you are an A Song of Ice and Fire fan, I would highly, highly recommend you go read this. I mean, it reads exactly like a history book, so it's kind of a little bit boring, but it's still really interesting and really pretty. Over here, I have my miniature books. I have Goethe's Wolfhaust, I have William Shakespeare's Hamlet, and I have The Travels of Sindbad. I, I don't know how you call it in English, but it's one of the 1001 Nights stories. Up here, I have more pretty books, which most of them I probably won't pull out because they're really heavy. 
but I have 1001 Nights. Then I have another one of these of Grimm's Fairy Tales bind ups, collections. This is probably my biggest one and I still haven't read it. I have this edition of Le Mort d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory, which if you've watched my last like wrap ups and TBRs, you will know that I'm currently reading. I have a bind up of Goethe's Faust part one and two. I have these collected Celtic fairy tales by Joseph Jacobs. And then I have a collection of Oscar Wilde quotes. And now let me just really quickly share with you my nonfiction shelf. Here I have all my uni books. These are for anthropology as well as just not books for uni, but books that are like culture related, as you can see with this big ass Japan book. And these are my economy books. And then down here, I have more economy books, more economy books, history, archaeology, myths and stuff. And then here it continues on with myths and nonfiction related to books. So here's my first shelf on my favorite shelf. I again have like old books up there, but I won't go through them. Also, I'm sorry if the angles are a bit weird in between. I'm doing my best, but my tripod isn't quite high enough. So the shelf, as you can probably very easily see, most of the books on the shelf are by Brandon Sanderson. So let's go through them. I have Skyward and Starsight in the Skyward series. The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, as well as Oathbringer from the Stormlight Archived. The Well of Ascension and the Hero of Ages in the Mistborn series. I also do own The Final Empire, but I lent it to a friend like five years ago and I still haven't gotten it back. <laughs> Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self and The Bands of Mourning in the Mistborn Era 2 series, which is the Wax and Wayne series. Elantris and I also do own again Warbreaker but again I lent it to a friend and I still haven't gotten it back. Arcanum Unbounded, Steelheart and Firefight from the Reckoner series. And then lastly by Brandon Sanderson I have Alcatraz vs the Evil Librarians and Alcatraz vs the Scrivener's Bones. And then the very last thing on this shelf is The Nevernight Chronicles by Jay Kristoff, which consists of Nevernight, God's Grave and Dark Dawn. Although I did order like the Illumicrate versions of Nevernight and God's Grave when they started reprinting the hardcovers because I do really want the entire series in hardcover. Next shelf I have quite a bit of kind of middle grade and YA fantasy although it's mostly just miscellaneous books that I didn't know where else to put them on the shelf and that I kind of wanted to have like in the part of the shelf that's see-through. First I have this bind up of Philip Pullman's Historic Materials trilogy which consists of Northern Lights or The Golden Compass, The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass. Then I have The Child Thief by Brom which I need to do a reread of because I really loved it when I read it first. Worf Saga by Kete Rechais. Ink Heart, Ink Blood and Ink Death by Cornelia Funke. Two editions of the first book in the Kingkiller Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss, which is The Name of the Wind. And then I also have The Wise Man's Fear, which is the second book in the Kingkiller Chronicles, and The Slow Regard of Silent Things, which is a novella. I have The Chronicles of the Emerged World by Licia Truisi. I'm not sure what the titles are in English, I just know that the first one is Nihal from the Land of the Wind, and the last one is, I think, The Amulet of Power. If you can see there in the back, I also have the other two trilogies in the same world by Lucia Troisi. However, since I did not like either of them, the other one, by the way, is behind there. These two are from the same series. I have relegated them to the back because I do not have space for them in the front on my favorite shelf. And then lastly, I have this book, which is a companion short story collection to the Chronicles of the Emerged World. Next shelf down, I have a couple of K-pop thingies that I don't know where to put yet, so they're here for now. And I also have my signed Jungha album, which you can't see, because she signed it with black on the dark part. But whatever, just thought I'd share this part with you. Next part is my M. Bishop collection that is not The Black Jewels, as well as some other miscellaneous books. First, I have Sebastian, Belladonna and Bridge of Dreams in the Ephemera series. Then I have 
Pillars of the World, Shadows and Light and the House of Gaia in the Tyr Lane trilogy. There in the back you can see my German copies of the Black Jewel series, at least the ones that I still own. I do not have all of them anymore. Written in Red, Murder of Crows. Vision in Silver, Marked in Flesh. Etched in Bone, Lake Silence and Wild Country all in the other series. The Gospel of Loki and the Testament of Loki by Joanne M. Harris, which are part of the Loki duology. The Magician's Guild, The Novice and The High Lord by Trudy Canavan, which are part of the Black Magicians trilogy. And lastly on the shelf, Magician's Apprentice, also by Trudy Canavan, which is the prequel to the Black Magicians trilogy. Next on my favorite shelf I have my everything that isn't fantasy as well as the last of my adult high fantasy books. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Treasure Island as well as The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Peter Pan and Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens by J.M. Barry. The Call of the Wild, White Fang and the Sea Wolf by Jack London. Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier, The Handmaid's Tale and The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, then The Dust Jacket of Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo because I lent the book to my mom, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, Gretel and the Dark by Eliza Granville, Sophie's World by Jo Stein Garda, The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. The Lion of Senate, The Eye of the Labyrinth and Lord of the Shadows by Jennifer Fallon, which are all part of the Second Sons trilogy. There in the back you can see book one of the Tide Lord Quartet. I do own all four of the books, which I think are the Immortal Prince. I can't remember the second book. Then I think the Chaos Crystal and the Palace of Impossible Dreams or something along those lines. But again, all four in the back. I just didn't like the series, so it doesn't get a space in front. Wolfblade, Warrior and Warlord, also by Jennifer Fallon, which is the Hydron Chronicles. And then lastly, by Jennifer Fallon, I have the Demon Child trilogy, which consists of Medallon, Treason Keep and Harshini. So my second to last shelf on my favorite shelf is of course my Cassandra Clare collection. First of all, City of Bones, City of Ashes and City of Class, which is the first part of the Mortal Instruments trilogy series. And then the second part of the Mortal Instruments series, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls and City of Heavenly Fire. Then next I have the Dark Artifices series because I decided to put them together like in a thematic way rather than in publication order. So next I have Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows and Queen of Air and Darkness. Then I have the first book in the Elder Curses series by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu, which is the Red Scrolls of Magic. I have the 10th anniversary edition of the first book in the Infernal Devices series, which is Clockwork Angel. And then of course I have the entire series Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess. And lastly, I have here two of the short story collections, The Bane Chronicles and Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy. And then at the very bottom over here, I have my favorite manga and graphic novel comic series, which is this one. But again, I won't go through them. But just if you wanted to know which ones are my favorites, you can pause and just look at which ones I have here. So now let us continue with these two shelves. As you can see, first of all, I have all my travel guides as well as my language books. I have K-pop, I have K-pop, I have K-pop, I have K-pop, I have K-pop. Oh, there's the books. First over here, I have an unread shelf for my classics and these are my red classics, mostly classics. So let's just get in closer. The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgen Burnett. The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. The Plays of Oscar Wilde. 1984 by George Orwell. The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Alice Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. Selected Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. Hamlet by William Shakespeare. Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Dubliners by James Joyce. The History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth. Moby Dick by Herman Melville, which actually belongs over here. 
but for some reason it's over there so let's change that five great short stories by jack london and camilla by joseph sheridan le Fanu. then my red classics first i have dracula by bram stoker emma by jane austen oliver twist by charles dickens johann wolfgang von goethe faust part one and two a brave new world by aldous huxley von baghdad nach stambul by karl may animal farm by george orwell Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain, Dead Poet Society by N. H. Kleinbaum, which is of course based on the movie, some children's classics, Madita by Astrid Lindgren, and Momo by Michael Ende. Then I have a few like myth legend collections. First I have Die Schönsten Sagen aus Wien, so like the most beautiful legends from Vienna by Wolfgang Moschka and Berit Mrugalska. Another Sagen aus Wien by Friedel Hofbauer, so Legends from Vienna, but this one is for children. And by the same author, Sagen aus der Steiermark, Legends from Styria, also for children. Geh mir aus der Sonne by Hans Schöpf, this is a collection of quotes by Diogenes, the cynic. And Irish Tales from the Other World, Ghosts, Fairies and Evil Spirits by Bob Curran. This shelf right here holds all of my current TBR of the month as well as right now all the books that I'm currently reading just so that I could have them in this bookshelf tour. First I have Le Mort d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory, A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Camera, which is book two in the Curse Breaker series, Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare which is the newest short story collections in the shadow world, on to the books I'm currently reading, The Shadow Rising, book four in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, The Burning Page, book three in the Invisible Library series by Genevieve Cogman, Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sim, and Who Fears Death by Nidhi Okorafor. One shelf to the left, I have my Robin Hobb collection, Shaman's Crossing, which is the first book in the Soldier's Son trilogy. The Farsi trilogy, which consists of Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest. The Life Ship Traders trilogy, which is Ship of Magic, Mad Ship and Ship of Destiny. And then lastly, the Tawny Man trilogy, which is Fool's Errand, Golden Fool and Fool's Fate. Moving further down, I actually have a double layered TBR shelf, so let me move the books in front out of the way first. The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean M. Owl, Die Hexe von Zeil by Harald Pariger, The Physician by Noah Gordon, The Book Thief by Marcus Susak, Atonement by Ian McGowan, Wie Lucas Charles Darwin aus der Klemme half by Michael Zeidler, The Pages by Murray Bale, Die Stadt der Träumenden Bücher by Walter Moers. I think this was translated into English and it's called The City of Dreaming Books, probably. Japanese Tales, Contes et Légendes du Pays Breton by Jan Brachilia, and Lady Gregory's Complete Irish Mythology, preface by W.B. Yeats. Then I have the Gallica Trilogy by Henri Leuvenbrück, which consists of Die Stimme der Wölfe, Die Stimme der Nebel and Die Stimme der Welt. I do not think this has been translated into English. A Song for Arbonne by Guy G.K. Forest Mage and Renegades Magic by Robin Hobb, book two and three in the Soldier's Sun trilogy. Prisingo by Christopher Paolini, book three in the Inheritance Cycle. And Windhaven and Dying of the Light by George R. R. Martin. Moving one over again, I have the last of my high fantasy to be read books. First, I have The Silmarillion and Return of the King by J.R.R. Tolkien. The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan, which is book five in the Wheel of Time series. The Crow and the Tree Song by Alison Crogan, which are book three and book four in the Books of Pelennor series. Also by Alison Crogan, I have Black Spring. Tondra's Kinder am Ende der Zeit by Aline P. Roberts. Book one in the Millennium's Rule series by Trudia Canavan, which is Thief's Magic. And I think this is book five or book six in the Invisible Library series, The Mortal World. Then, and I'm sorry, I can only do it like this, I have the last of my to be read shelf. The books that you can see over there in my back is kind of like learning French, easy literature, abridged versions, all the type of stuff, but I won't show them to you because I don't even really count them as part of my shelves. I have 
Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood, The Card Secret by Jo Steingarda, IQ 48 by Haruki Murakami, I think this one in English is A Certain Ambiguity by Gaurav Suri and Hartosh Singh Bal, Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke, Coraline and Other Stories by Neil Gaiman, Dr. Faustus by Thomas Mann, and John Milton's Paradise Lost. And then over there are my witch comic collections. I'm just gonna pull one of them. No, am I gonna pull one of them out? I'm not going to pull one of them out because that's scary. But like I have almost all the issues of which I think I'm missing two or so. So then up here I have my Percy Jackson and Harry Potter shelves and I hope my phone won't fall down while I show them to you. I have The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters and The Titan's Curse, as well as The Battle of the Labyrinth and The Last Olympian, all from the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. Well, that just fell down again. I just randomly decided to show you the books from the uppermost shelves here because first of all, the angle is better and second of all, the books have less far to fall. But anyway, continuing on, I have The Lost Hero, The Son of Neptune and The Mark of Athena, as well as The House of Hades and The Blood of Olympus, all in the Heroes of Olympus series. And then lastly by Rick Rowden, I have The Trials of Apollo, The Hidden Oracle. I have the illustrated editions of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I have English editions of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone as well as Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince and the Anniversary Ravenclaw edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And then I have the German editions of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and by the way yes I apparently as a five-year-old did draw on my Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban copy. And continuing on, I also have the German editions of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix and Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I also do on Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone in German, but I did lend it to my little sister who right now is at the age where she can start reading Harry Potter. The next two shelves that I will also show to you in my smallish cubes are my kind of urban paranormal fantasy shelves. This one is all Laurel K. Hamilton and this one is mostly Carrie Arthur and some miscellaneous urban paranormal fantasy books. So let's start with Anita Blake. I have Guilty Pleasures, The Laughing Corpse, Circus of the Damned and The Lunatic Cafe. Bloody Bones, The Killing Dance, Blue Moon and Obsidian Butterfly. I am for some reason missing book seven, which is Burnt Offerings, which I do own, but maybe I just have it at my mom's or something. I have Narcissus in Chains, Cerulean Sins, Incubus Dreams and Mika. I have Danse Macabre, The Harlequin, Blood Noir and Skin Trade. Flirt, Bullet, Hit List and Kiss the Dead. And the last book I own in the Anita Blake series, Affliction. And in the Mary Chantry series by Laura K. Hamilton, I first have a bind up of the first two books in German, which is Kiss of the Shadows and A Caris of Twilight. Then I have Seduced by Moonlight, A Stroke of Midnight and Mistral's Kiss as well as A Lick of Frost, Swallowing Darkness and Divine Misdemeanors. And since that was it for my Laurel K. Hamilton books, we can move on to my non Laurel K. Hamilton paranormal fiction. First, I have Cry Wolf by Patricia Briggs, which is the first book in the Alpha and Omega series. Next, I have the Spook Squad series by Carrie Arthur, which consists of Memory Zero, Generation 18 and Penumbra. Also by Carrie Arthur, I have Destiny Kills. Also by Carrie Arthur, I have the Riley Jensen Guardian series, Full Moon Rising, Kissing Sin and Tempting Evil, Dangerous Games, Embraced by Darkness and The Darkest Kiss, and the last three books, Deadly Desire, Bound to Shadows and Moonsworn. And the last book on the shelf is Haunted by Kevin Hearn, which is the first book in the Iron Druid Chronicles. Continuing on, I have my diverse shelf going into my YA, YA-ish high fantasy books. So most of these are books that I put here because they have protagonists that are not white. That's, that's basically it. And most of them I think are also own voices books. 
First, I have The Last Namsara by Kristen Sicarelli, which is the first book in the Iskari trilogy. Then I have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renée Adie, which is the first book in the Wrath and the Dawn duology. I have Girls of Paper and Fire and Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nan, which are the first two books in the Girls of Paper and Fire trilogy or series. The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, which is the first book in the Poppy War trilogy series. I don't know. Descendant of the Crane by Chuan He. Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim, which is the first book in the Blood of the Stars series. Eon by Alison Goodman, which is the first book in the Iona duology. Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto, which is the first book in the Crown of Feathers series. Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, which is the first book in... I don't remember the name of the series. I think it's the Children of Blood and Bone series. I'm not sure. The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison, which is the first book in the Broken Earth trilogy. The Good Luck Girls by Charlotte Nicole Davis, which is the first book in the Good Luck Girls series. The Abyss Surrounds Us by Emily Skritsky, which is the first book in a duology that I do not remember the name of again. Gumiho Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, which is the first book in the Gumiho series. The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshi, which is the first book in the Gilded Wolves series. Crown of Coral and Pearl, which also is the first book in a series that I do not know the name of. Bring Me Their Hearts and Find Me Their Bones by Sarah Wolf, which are the first two books in the Bring Me Their Hearts series. Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maherin, which is the first book in the Serpent and Dove series. Then I have the Rhiannon's Ride trilogy by Kate Forthsith, which consists of The Tower of Ravens, The Heart of Stars and The Shining City. Over here, and I can't get closer because I have a chair there, I have this cube where I always put the books that I have read that month that I have not talked about yet in a wrap up. Currently on this shelf I have Twilight's Dawn by Anne Bishop and The Last Wish by Andrei Sapkowski which is the first book in the Witches series. And down here you can see my huge bind up of all seven Narnia books. Over there I have just some more old books. And very up there on top, I have my Bond Destiny collection. I think I also have one graphic novel and one comic up there, but mostly it's just French and Belgian Bond Destiny. We are getting closer and closer to the end. This shelf is my female written YA high fantasy, mostly high fantasy books, going into retellings, going into female written adult high fantasy. First, I have book one in the Grisha trilogy by Lee Bardugo, Shadow and Bone. Then I have The Naming and The Riddle, which are the first two books in the Books of Pelennor series by Alison Crogan. I have The Folk of the Air trilogy by Holly Black, The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King and Queen of Nothing. Book one in the Curse Breaker series, A Curse to Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. The Star der Wölfe by Laura Gallego Garcia. And again, I think this just hasn't been translated into English and it's originally by a Spanish author. House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones, which is the first book in the House Moving Castle series, I think it's called. Rune Marks and Rune Light by Joanne M. Harris, which are part of the Rune Marks duology by Joanne M. Harris. Book one in the Camelot Rising series, The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White. The Queens of Inishlea and Lady Hotspur by Tessa Gretchen, which are two companion novels set in the same world. Circe by Madeline Miller and then the rest of the books on the shelf all are written by Juliette Marillier. First I have the Seven Waters series, Daughter of the Forest, Son of the Shadows, Child of Prophecy, Seer of Seven Waters, Heir to Seven Waters and Flame of Seven Waters. Although I think I swapped out Heir to Seven Waters and Seer of Seven Waters. Then I have Heart's Blood, Shadowfell, which is the first book in the Shadowfell trilogy, and Wildwood Dancing, which is the first book in, I think, the Wildwood Dancing duology. Continuing on, I have my adult high fantasy shelf, although mostly high fantasy shelf, going from female authors to male authors. First, I have The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, Cushiel's Start, Cushiel's Avatar, and Cushiel's Chosen by Jacqueline Carey, all part of the Kushiel trilogy, I think it's called. The Invisible Library and Masked City by Genevieve Cogman, the first two books in the Invisible Library series. Book one and two in the Draconis Memoriam series by Anthony Ryan, The Waking Fire and Legion of Flame. The first three books in the Wheel of Time, The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt and Dragon Reborn. 
Then I have The Hobbit as well as the first two books in the Lord of the Rings trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien, which are The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers. And lastly on the shelf I have the A Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin, A Game of Thrones, A Clash of Kings, A Storm of Swords, A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons. Then let's move slowly over there. As you can see I have some manga shelves here and you can also see why I can't move closer. So I'll just get the books and get them over here. But this is kind of miscellaneous books that aren't classics and are not high fantasy or fantasy and that I also don't have on my favorite shelf. Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. A Little Life by Hanya Yana Gihara. Angels and Demons and The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown, the first two books in the Robert Langdon series. Then I have a random fake book over here that doesn't have any money in it, so I don't mind showing it to you. The Christmas Secret by Jo Steingada. The Martian by Andy Weir. The Life of Pi by Jan Martel. Then I have these two short story collections by Haruki Murakami, which is The Elephant Vanishes and The Ich eines schönen Morgens im April das hundertprozentige Mädchen sah. I do not think this particular collection has been published in English. The Foretelling by Alice Hoffman. Tanit by Cheryl Jordan. And lastly on the shelf, Witch Child by Celia Rees. Then again, down there I have mostly manga. I won't go over them. And now let's move to the very last shelf that I still have to share. This shelf holds the very last of my high fantasy books written by male authors and the rest are high fantasy slash urban fantasy books that are in the YA category and also written by male authors. I have The Color of Magic and Mort by Terry Pratchett. Both are books in the disc world cycle type thingy. Book one and two in the inheritance cycle by Christopher Paolini, Aragon and Eldest. Spellslinger by Sebastian de Castell, the first book in the Spellslinger series. Then I have the Codex Alera series by Jim Butcher, which consists of book one, Furies of Calderon, book two, Academ's Fury, book three, Curse's Fury, then Captain's Fury, Princeps Fury, and First Lord's Fury. And then lastly, I have book two and three in the Bartimaeus sequence by Jonathan Stroud, which are The Golem's Eye and Ptolemy's Gate. And I also do own book one, which is the Amulet of Samarkand, but I again lent it out. And then down here I have the last of my mangas. And with that said that was it for my bookshelf tour. That is all the books that I own on my bookshelf and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I won't come in front of the camera here right now because I did take a break in between and I did eat in between and so my lipstick is kind of like half off my lips, half on my lips, and I'm too lazy to put it back on. So you won't see me anymore. Anyway, with that said, that was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribing. Tell me in the comments down below if you own any of the series that I own as well, maybe especially some of the series that you don't see as often on booktube. Also, if you want a manga bookshelf tour, then tell me in the comments down below as well. And all the links to my social media, as always, are in the description box down below. So go and check those out. And I hope I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. How am I supposed to do that? Anyway, bye.